had the same trouble trying to bring myself to start recording this that I've had a bunch of other times. Just kind of like feeling again like I don't have anything to say or something or like I guess more than that that language is limited and a lot of what I'm trying to communicate I feel like needs like I it's just I feel like language is like it's like forcing something into this sort of like narrow channel or something and language is masculine and whatever I don't know it's I feel like it's easier to try and talk through a lot of this than it is to write about it writing's even sort of more challenging for me but but then I reminded myself that Joe Rogan doesn't seem to go through these kinds of ruminations before he records a podcast. So whatever, I can just jump on here and do it. Today I was thinking I'd talk more about crypto scams and the impact that they have on social good crypto projects like Seeds. And, uh, and just generally the way that capitalism has trained us to look at, I guess, like organizations and how that's also <laughs> created problems for Seeds. Um, and I thought I'd share more about some past life stuff. I just started kind of deep diving more so into um, like further past life regressions. This past week, I did two separate sessions with Taya Anderson, who I've worked with um, on and off. But I mean, there were periods, there was a period of a few years where we worked together super regularly. And then I didn't work with anybody for a while. It was like I needed to, uh, it was like I was too reliant, I guess, on thinking that I needed what I needed had to come through working with someone else or you know like doing some kind of therapy or having some sort of external support through another person and I think the lesson I was meant to learn through that was that all of this stuff can be sourced through me and that I can do it more and more like it gets easier the more I clear out the stuff in me that's blocking it and Vipassana meditation has been by far you know like the the best tool I've found to clear out the stuff that blocks whatever inside of me. But then, yeah, it was like, I, I felt like I had to learn that lesson. And so I was doing more things on my own and was less attached to this idea of like, oh, I don't have support. Like I have to go outside of myself to get support and kind of like being panicky about that for a long time. Um, and then once I kind of, I think, shifted more of that, then I was able to come back to Taya from a different place. And it felt like she was in a different place too, which was cool. I'm wondering, I think I could... I think she'd be down to come on this podcast sometime and it'd be interesting to talk to her. I found her initially because of a conversation I listened to her having um, with this guy, Lee Harris, who I actually mentioned on the podcast before, this like energy heal healer person who uh, was her roommate many years ago. So they knew each other. Um, anyway, yeah, so this crypto scam thing we just had just yesterday. I'm recording this on a Saturday and just yesterday – we had, like, the Seeds community sent a gift to an unhoused mother um, who has a son. She's living in Chicago where it's fucking cold. And uh, we sent her $3,000 because that was what she said she needed, you know, like, to get into a secure home. By the way, like, in the past several days, we've been engaging more with – it's it's been, like, women and mothers, single moms, who are dealing with the experience of homelessness. And, like – I've been thinking more lately, I think I've maybe even mentioned this before, about how, like, fucked up rent is. And it's just, like, when somebody's unhoused, the fact that you often have to get, like, one of the mothers who's living on the streets with her kid has to get a double security deposit to move into a, a fucking house. And so it's, like, how do you even – into an apartment. So how do you even, like – I mean, the obstacles to getting into a place that you're not even going to own – it's in some instances like they can seem, you know, like as insurmountable as getting a mortgage for a house that you will own. And it's just that system I feel like has to go away as well. It's just so messed up. So she needs a double security deposit in addition to first month's rent. And I understand, obviously, how the system works, like the landlord and a lot of times landlords aren't evil corporations like the landlord that I recently had that I had a lot of trouble with. A lot of times they're just people, but it, just the design of the system such that, you know, like a landlord is going to have to think like, oh, I know this person has had trouble paying the rent in the past, so I'm going to charge them for three months rent to move in or whatever it is. Like, I understand how that's happening systemically and I can see things from that person's point of view, but it's just fucked up. It's just another example, I think, of a shitty system. Anyway, so we've been engaging more with... Um, like women going through this experience 
And yesterday we sent this gift that I mentioned for $3,000 to this, this single mom in Chicago who's been going through homelessness. And like, I mean, even like initially there was a problem because, uh, which I didn't foresee when I was engaging with her at first. Um, she had a paper ID, but the, I guess the state of Illinois, I used to live there, but i never got a license while I was there. So I didn't like go through the experience of getting a, in a license in that state or whatever. But yeah, she said that they gave her a paper license and then you have to wait up to 20 days to get like the card license. Um, and like you need a fucking ID to, to use a site like Coinbase, any centralized platform um, that requires like KYC, know your customer. Um, so, I mean, we Seeds and me personally through Seeds have seen how messed up that is like with people we've tried to help and have been able to help in places like South Sudan where the government doesn't issue IDs to women in a lot of cases and you need an ID to open up a bank account or deal with a financial institution, these centralized financial institutions in the first place. So the fact that we're working in the world of decentralized finance and we can send seeds to somebody and they can swap them on a decentralized platform like Uniswap, which doesn't require any kind of ID verification. That's a, it's a huge deal. It's like, it's not perfect because they still have to figure out a way to swap the cryptocurrency for their local currency in a lot of cases, which may re which may require relying on like a male person in their community who has an ID and has a bank account. So that's problematic. But it's like three steps in the right direction beyond what this old system is doing. But yeah, this I mean, this person is living in the States, the you know, like the richest country in the fucking world. And this ID verification thing, like like she was sharing in our discord about how, you know, like obviously, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a thing, let alone should it like be an obvious thing that the system isn't set up for people that are unhoused. So she had said she had to run around just to get the paper to like be able to get the ID because she doesn't have like a mailing address for it to be sent to at a house. So anyway, we sent her the gift. Um, we were really blessed that we had We've had a couple larger gifts come through the seed system recently, and so we had funds available to source support quickly. And uh, an urgency is something we take into account when we're making decisions internally. Like anyone can redeem a seed and GoFundMe style raise money with a custom page, um, but also we're helping people, like we're allocating recurring gifts um, internally as well, and we do that in addition to what you can do when you're raising funds yourself. Um, so yeah, we had these funds available and urgency is something we take into account when making decisions about how to allocate them. Anyway, so yeah, we sent the funds to her um, and we send them in seeds. And sometimes what happens, it was cool though because we helped two unhoused people this past week um, and both of them were more internet savvy in the past, it felt like there was a lot more education that was required to help people through that step of the process, those steps of the process, especially if they didn't redeem the seeds on their own behalf. Like we redeem seeds. I redeem seeds personally on their behalves. Is that a word? Behalves? I don't think it is. On their behalf, um, just to get it done and get it, try and take, get this taken care of quickly. And then afterward, I explained like, okay, if you wanted to use this resource going forward, you just need to redeem a seed to activate your request. Um, but this time I redeemed a seed to activate the request for you. So, um, yeah, we sent the gift. We send the gifts and seeds. So we sent her $3,000 worth of seeds and explained how to swap them for fiat currency for dollars. Um, and the one person just did it without any trouble, which was great to see. She just figured it out with the explanation provided, which was awesome. Um, they were, I think they were both younger, too. Like some of the other people that we've helped that were older had more trouble. Um, but yeah, this other person, like she was totally on top of her shit. Like she, she went through the steps, but then she was having trouble because stupid gas prices are so high. Um, and we send them ether to help cover gas fees as well, based on what the cost to swap would be at the moment we send the gift. But the stupid gas fees had gone up since we sent the gift. So she had to, she was waiting for gas fees to come down. And in the meantime, she went on to she went on Twitter and was talking to somebody that she was led to believe was Uniswap Twitter support to try and get help. 
And these fuckers sent her to the scam site and said that she had to connect her wallet there to verify some bullshit. So she did that, and they stole all of the crypto in her wallet. So I was furious. Like, I, if there's, like, the emotion that I go to most frequently for a while now um, has been, like, I kind of have this low-grade anger about the system, like, 93% of the time. And it's getting better, and I know it's like every, like, I know with Vipassana, eventually I'll meditate enough and it'll go away, and I won't have this anger, and, and I'll also be able to see things more clearly and therefore be more helpful in actually getting us out of these bullshit systems. But right now I'm still just mad about them pretty much all the time. Um, but with this, I was, like, furious. And so, like, several of us went after them on Twitter a bit, and we're just like, like, they, this scam account, by the way, the scam account is Desk Uniswap on Twitter. So don't, the, a good reminder in this is to never ever connect your wallet to a site that you're not absolutely certain is the site that you intend to connect to, that you're not absolutely certain is legit. Um, and never ever provide your private um, key information to any entity, any individual that you're not 100% certain is trustworthy. And I mean, trustworthy entities won't ask you for that information also so that's another thing to keep in mind but um excuse me like i mean you have to provide your 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 private key in order to connect with some of these wallet tools in the first place so like you're gonna have to put it into if you're importing a wallet into a tool like metamask you'll need to bring that information in and metamask in my experience like i use metamask regularly and i haven't had any trouble with them Although I don't love the organization behind MetaMask, this organization called Consensus, I don't think is super, their energy isn't great, but, but MetaMask has been trustworthy. So like in those instances, you will need to share your private key if you're importing a wallet, but yeah, you know, like make sure it's a legit organization in the first place. And if you're ever not sure, you can come into our Discord. The Discord is just, you can go to the, go to the top of the Seeds site, seedsgifts.com, click there to join the Discord and ask somebody and we can help you out. Um, yeah, but anyway, so she was like on top of her shit. She was being proactive. She was going onto Twitter to ask for support about this gas fee issue and this fucking scam account. Um, I later saw that what they were doing is they were, they were replying to people that had tweeted at like legit Uniswap, like Uniswap's verified, I don't even know if it's verified actually, but like their, their real account and, uh, and trying to send people to this other scam site to connect their wallet to verify. They said to verify some bullshit. So, so yeah, so she, all of her crypto was stolen. So we covered it. We we sent her the funds again and, like, worked with her to make sure that she was able to receive them and that it was kind of a blessing in a sense because, well, um, the ID thing ended up not being a problem because she had another account that she'd previously set up um, with another wallet. So she said that she was able to transfer funds to her bank account without having to wait fucking up to three weeks for her card ID to come in and whatever. Um, but yeah, this scam thing is, it was so infuriating. And then like, so they blocked me on Twitter after I went after them for a bit. It's probably because I called them fucking evil <laughs> and kept tweeting that a bunch of times. And I'm thinking... One time in the past, I set up a Twitter bot to, to like, I don't know if y'all have ever thought about this. I, I made a TikTok about it a while ago, but like the word stan, like when people say that they stan things to mean that they're super fans. Um, it's a weird word because it's like referencing the Eminem song stan where he, stan the character, like murders a, a pregnant woman. Um, so yeah, I was just like, this is weird. like, we shouldn't be using this phrase like without thinking about it like it's there's misogyny in this so I set up this Twitter bot like well first I there's this guy what the fuck's his name is it Ira Levin maybe Ira Levin is a person I think there's this guy on Twitter Ira and like he has a podcast that I've never listened to but a lot of his thing is about being woke quote unquote and he said something he used the word stan one time and I like called him out about it and said I thought it was misogynistic and he ended up blocking me and he was just shitty. Um, so after that, I set up this Twitter bot to tweet at everyone um, who used the word Stan in a tweet ever to just be like, this is a weird fucking thing to say. Um, so anyway, I've done that previously. So I was thinking I could set up a Twitter bot 
to go after this account, maybe it could be set up so that anytime somebody tweets at them at all or anytime they tweet, um, you know, the bot would automatically be like, yo, this is a scam. Be careful. Um, but the, the like larger idea I was thinking I'd try to communicate today, it's something I've been thinking about for a while, is the way that these, like, so there's that facet of this where like a scam entity, shitty, whatever, like took advantage. Of, like they stole $3,000 from a woman who doesn't have a home, who has a kid who had just been given a gift so she could get into a fucking secure apartment. They stole that fucking money. And like, that's awful. And there are a lot of crypto scams like that. We've never experienced something specifically like this before, or we would have, you know, like been able to warn her. Um, but there's that. And then on the other side of it, I started making like, like TikTok promote is like a kind of newish feature. And so I tried to make years ago, Seeds had Facebook ads for a short period of time and then Facebook blanket banned every cryptocurrency thing unless it was regulated in some specific governmental way. So that was really helpful for Seeds for a while and then they just stopped permitting it. So it was a blessing eventually because it, it sent me to TikTok. But it was just like, it's like the word cryptocurrency and they're just these regulatory bodies just ban every fucking thing. So like, then later I was making YouTube ads for a while about seeds. Um, and the intention is just to let more people know about it because we've never had like every other crypto project, every, every crypto project I can think of besides seeds has had sometimes enormous marketing budgets where they're just like crypto.com bought the fucking staples, like the rights to rename the staples center. So now it's going to be the crypto.com center or something like these projects have enormous budgets. And we've never had that largely because of misogyny in investing. Like when I would pitch investors, they would be less likely to invest in me because of their, their misogyny. Side note, another thing I think it's good to start doing is like, I think a lot of people, when they use phrases like that, they'll be like, they were less likely to invest in me because I'm a woman or whatever. I think we should shift it and start being careful to say like, they were less likely to invest in me because of their own misogyny, because it's, it's not because I'm a woman. There's nothing wrong with being a woman. It's because of misogyny and other people that that's been a thing. Anyway, now I'm like all fired up talking about all this stuff. Um, yeah, so these other projects had like enormous fucking marketing budgets and we have never had that. So I've had to do other stuff to survive for years and was broke for many years and then eventually realized like, oh, I can leverage my experience as a whatever career profitable stock trader and how I was able to figure out ways to be even more profitable trading crypto and I could teach a course. And that can be a way to grow our community in like a, like more authentically, like through the course, I can share information that can hopefully help people out in terms of trading. And like now we're at this stage in the evolution of the crypto sector that, you know, enough people in the developed world, particularly or whatever, um, have like they've heard about crypto and they're probably thinking like, oh, I should maybe pay attention to this. I know a bunch of people have gotten a lot of, they've like built wealth in crypto, so I should maybe keep an eye on it. So like now's a good time to like make a course available. And then if you sign up for the course, we give you, like if you pay in full, it's 2000 bucks, we'll give you $2,000 worth of seeds at the time you pay, like at market value at the time you pay. So like that makes it effectively free. So it's also a way to help people have that crypto in hand, to have seeds in hand and mess around with it. And like, it can be a distribution mechanism too, but it's slower. It's not as fast as doing an airdrop to, I don't know, 200,000 anonymous wallets or something. But it's also, I'm very down to play like the long-term game here. Like, I don't even want to call it a game, but like, it's okay with me if we're building a genuine, authentic community of nice people. It's okay with me if that takes five, 10 years, um, as opposed to doing something more dramatic and wider spanning and then having a bunch of people involved who don't really understand what Seeds is and don't really care about its mission to help like transcend capitalism. So I'm okay with that. I think it's, I feel like the older I get or like the, it's not even, it's about, not about age so much as a, uh, it's just the more I actually grow spiritually and like the more I clear out my bullshit, um, the better able I am to see 
how so many of these things that were so frustrating and have been obstacles were actually gifts. Like, I think it's, it's going to really show itself to be a gift. And I think it's already showing itself to be a gift that, um, we didn't have these huge marketing budgets to, to do what other crypto projects did. I mean, many of those crypto projects aren't even around or active anymore. Um, so yeah, so there's that, but the thing that's messed up now that I wanted to try and share more about today, I haven't seen conversation about this anywhere else. It's like, so it's like we suffered and this vulnerable person suffered because of this scam, this cryptocurrency scam, right? Then on the other side of it, Seeds has suffered because of like this dumb idea from like those in power at places like Google and Facebook, um, where it's just like, if you even mention the word cryptocurrency and it's not already regulated by fucking like government entities that don't even understand crypto, that don't have a good understanding of what it even is or does, um, then it's banned too. So we're getting hit by the crypto scams on one side and then we're being punished as though we're a crypto scam on the other side. So I've had to do all this other stuff to like try and get the word out about seeds. And like, like I said, it was a blessing that that took me to TikTok. That was really helpful. Um, and soon, recently, like recently being like, I don't know, a month or a month and a half ago, I started trying to do YouTube ads again. And they banned me again almost immediately, even though I've seen like, I, I mean, the quote unquote ad, I mean, they do call them ads there. It was a post, it was a video, and it was just me talking about my experience. And uh, it was like about the course. Like t I talked about how I was a stock trader and like how I can share this knowledge about trading and like how Seeds is working to transcend what's broken in the old system and stuff. And I got fucking banned. But then like I was looking at this other video the other day, um, a video that's uh, like explaining decentralized finance on Uniswap. And there were two different ads at the beginning from male crypto whatever people um about like my idiot college friend like he made z a zillion dollars in crypto and you can learn how to do it too and here's my podcast and then i think the other ad was for a course so it was just like why the fuck are these people who are also just like like that those people aren't like regulated by the sec or whatever like why are their ads being approved and it just it's just so it's so frustrating but that's like the design of that old shitty system but then again, like, because I think these things do show themselves to be blessings and hopefully soon I'll skip the part where I'm angry about them um, and just get to the part where I'm appreciating that they're blessings is that like on, so then I realized like, oh, actually I can do this on TikTok and they've updated the, like promote had become, they'd added other functionality. So you can like basically do the same thing you would do on YouTube, but do it on TikTok. And that was like way more helpful because I have like 60 subscribers on YouTube, but 37 and a half thousand on TikTok, so like there's more eyeballs there um, already. So yeah, I just started experimenting with different posts on TikTok and promoting them, and uh, and they would ban them in like fucking 24 hours a lot of the time if the word cryptocurrency was mentioned or if it was on the landing page. So it's the same fucking thing, but like with TikTok, it's different because you can spam them and you can just try different things. And um, I've realized that like when they ban stuff, they tend to do it after like two days so I can run an ad for two days and then start it again. But then that's kind of shitty because like the algorithm seems to get smarter. So you're getting, you're paying less for more clicks if the ad is able to run longer. But when they're fucking banning it fast, we don't have that opportunity. So it's just like, like either side of it, you're just kind of getting fucked because of this shitty energy in the old system. And I think that's my lesson. <laughs> that's like the thing I'm supposed to like learn in this life or whatever. I think um, a big lesson for me is going to be releasing this anger about it. And I think it's just a function of where we're at in the stage of the evolution of the sector and blah, whatever. Um, there's not sophisticated understanding in terms of regulation, like at all, which really does concern me because like fucking the people making these laws, like, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but like, I think what is it? The average Congress person is like a 55 year old white straight man who was probably a lawyer, probably has a law degree. What does that person know about blockchain technology? Like they don't know shit. They, they're looking at it and they're coming at it through this like defended point of view of like, oh, we have to stop scammers. Like the, the point of making these laws is to regulate so scams don't happen. And then it's just like seeds is getting swept up in this catch-all of just like, oh, it also is cryptocurrency. So like 
we need to view it like all of these other shitty fucking projects and it and which isn't to say that every other project is shitty but there's just no project that's like seeds there's no pro- that i've seen like remotely at all there's no project that's leveraging these technologies to build economic abundance for everyone involved in the way that we're doing and like it's just scary because the ignorance and then the ill intention baked into the scams and the regula- regulators um they've impacted us already and like it's just it's just so endemic such it's such a manifestation of the endemic problems in the old system and i think we're going to be able to surmount it um i think that's part of the reason that it's been this slower build up but yeah yesterday i was really fucking angry about the scammers 